My name is Don Smith. I'm with SSI Consulting, and I'm here today with Keith Carruthers, CEO of SSI Consulting, and we're going to be talking about uh, strategic planning. So good afternoon, Keith. Hi, Don. So Keith, we'll jump right into it. Why is strategic planning so important to an organization? You know, in business, we're trying to win, right? We're trying to grow our business. We're trying to deliver to our clients. We're trying to do you know, all these things, depending on what industry we're in. But every business has goals, right? And if you don't clearly define those goals, and also you don't have a specific plan to reach those goals, if you succeed, it's going to be more due to luck than, than actual purposeful action, right? So the first thing is we need to determine what is it we're trying to accomplish. That's where you get into missions and visions and value statements and all that kind of stuff. And then specifically, what is it we're trying to accomplish and how are we going to accomplish that? So you got to be specific. And by being specific on what you're trying to accomplish and making sure that's linked to the goals of the organization, it allows you the ability to craft an action plan that's going to maximize the probability of you reaching that objective and mitigate the risks along the way. So... How far out should an organization be planning? Well, that's that's an interesting question because there's a couple of things. You know, a number of years ago, it was very common for companies to do five-year plans, and some even did ten-year plans. It was also common to do these big, huge binders at the time that had the the strategic plan in it. And by the time you got done going through months of work to develop the plan, everybody was exhausted. And nobody really looked at the plan anymore. It sat on a shelf somewhere. Well, that doesn't work in today's world, right? For a number of reasons. One is simpler is better. It's clearer. We want plans that everyone in the organization can understand. The other thing is with the rapid change, primarily due to technology, the world's changing so fast. The plan for five or 10 years is, is a futile effort. Like the longer out we look, the more inaccurate we're going to be, I guess we would say, because there's too many other things that can change that will impact it. So today, when we talk to clients, it's usually let's craft a one-year plan. Let's consider two or three years out for some key decisions that we might not be able to action in a very short time frame. For example, we need to build a second plant. So you need to think about some of those things that might become a real constraint in the future. But for the actual goals and specific actions, it really should be confined to the next year. And we tend to do what we refer to as rapid fire strategic planning. Let's get the group together. Let's figure out what the critical things are, you know, the typical SWOT analysis stuff. What is it we're good at? It? What is it we're not good at? Where are the opportunities in the market? Where's the risks in the market? tie that analysis into what our vision is for the company and let's craft some main purposeful actions that we can address in the next year that are going to bring us closer to the goal. So if we're considering doing an action, is it bring us closer to the goal or further away from the goal? The other thing is we're famous, particularly in North America, with putting way too many actions in, way too many goals, way too many objectives. You can't deliver on those with any degree of success or excellence if you've got too much to do. What's the few things that are the most meaningful to our company? And then we need specific action plans to address that. So who's going to do what by when? And, and we need some mechanism of accountability to make sure that we stay focused. So we got to remember when we're designing a strategic plan, it's important on what it is we're going to work on, but it's just as important and often more important what it is we're not going to work on. We have to say no to some things so we can dedicate our effort around the things that are most meaningful. So focus is a big advantage of crafting a robust, short-term, rapid-fire plan that everybody understands and is clearly communicated. So um, we're going to wrap this up here. Do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, there, there's, there's a couple of things. And one of them I just touched on. The value of a strategic plan is the actions we take. It's not the document we create. We want to make sure that we don't just develop a, a pretty binder, as I like to say, 
it's the actions that come out of that document that are important. So what I'm trying to say is it's you got to have an implementation plan. It's got to be specific who's going to do what by when. And we have to have a mechanism that people stay focused on that and that they're accountable for achieving those results. So that's the first thing. Implementation is important. The other thing is one of the big reasons why we do a strategic plan is for the organization to stay focused. So every time the wind changes, we don't change direction. A strategic plan restricts you from doing that. You know, we put a plan together for this year. That's not on the plan. If we do that, it changes everything we're doing. We got to stay focused, right? Uh, plan the work and work the plan. Having said that, though, you have to have a little bit of flexibility. It's kind of like a live document. And that doesn't mean that we just change the plan every time somebody comes up with a new idea. What it does mean is if there's a significant change in the marketplace, we can't ignore it and say, oh, well, there's a great opportunity. We can't go after that, though, because it's not in the strategic plan. So, for example, we have a major competitor that is really penetrated in a certain geographic area of the market. They own most of the business there. They're a real powerful competitor. and We're not focusing a lot in that area because we're kind of at a disadvantage. So we're going to put our focus in other areas. If that competitor all, all of a sudden went into business, there's a whole big bunch of the market that's not served anymore. We can't say, well, we're going to ignore that because our next plan's not due for nine months. We may have to adjust our plan. Or a threat comes up. And the best example of that is the pandemic. I'm sure there's companies that put strategic plans together a few months before the pandemic hit, and they had to say, wow, we got to change our plan. We've got this huge risk to the business. We're just going to focus on risk mitigation now, trying to operate in this uncertain environment. So there are things that require the plan to have a little flexibility, but that doesn't mean every time somebody comes up with another idea, we abandon the plan. That's why we have a plan, so that we don't do that, we stay focused. And I guess. The final thing is, we talked earlier about companies doing shorter plans than in the past. There's no question that that's happening, and there's no question that that's the right approach. But some might say, well, with all the uncertainty, we can't do a plan. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we let ourselves off the hook and we use that stuff as an excuse, right? Even though we were going shorter term, plans are still critical to the business. And we can't let ourselves off the hook and say, well, you know, because there might be some global catastrophe that would render my plan useless, I'm not going to make a plan at all. Uh, it, even though we're going with short-term plans, it's really, really important that we plan. So first of all, what are we trying to be when we grow up as an organization? What's our mission and our vision? And what values are we going to adhere to? Secondly, what does that mean for the next year? What are the key opportunities that we want to pursue and they should be linked, linked to strengths of our organization. Thirdly, are there any things two or three years out that we need to talk about because we can't fix them if we wait three years? And then finally, what's our specific implementation plan? Who's going to do what by when? And how are we going to make sure that we actually do what we say we're going to do? Because uh, I've done a lot of work with a lot of clients and usually the problem isn't that they don't know what to do. They don't know what their strengths are. They don't have good ideas. Their problem is they don't craft it in such a manner and they don't have an implementation strategy that they develop this great plan. They all leave the boardroom. They come back next year and they talk about the same issues and they craft the same plan. And then they go to the next year and they still don't execute, right? So it's about implementation. I guess we're out of time now. So uh, to all our viewers out there, I just want to remind you that if you uh, have any comments, you can put them in the comment section below. Or you can reach out to us if you want to have a conversation with us. So, Keith, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. No problem. And uh, to everybody else, have a great day.